Hey, how's it going guys? Stolen here with Raised by Sharks. Today we're going to be talking about which skills we think are the best in the game. So this one's more of like a discussion. We want to see what you think about each skill or which skills you like the best in the comments. But we're going to go with what we think are the best skills in the game in each category. We're going to break it down and talk about why. So we're going to start with the offensive skills where the obvious clear-cut winner is Weakness Exploit. Weakness Exploit level 3 is easy to get and gives you plus 50% affinity on weak points, which isn't even fully just their 100% weak points, but partially weak points, meaning that realistically from that skill, you're basically upping your total affinity over the course of an entire hunt, counting hits that don't hit the weak points, upping it by probably about 30%, which is really a lot. The next skill is Non-Elemental Boost. Non-Elemental Boost gives Elementless Weapons a 10% increase. This works for any weapon, including heavy bow guns and light bow guns, but the bow guns need to have zero of the elemental type ammos. So it can't have dragon, thunder, ice, any of that stuff. Uh, it gives insane damage. I mean, really, 10% increase to raw damage is a lot. Okay, and the next one is Attack Boost. So some people might look at Attack Boost and think it's not as good as it really is because they see it only gives like 3 or 5 or whatever attack plus the affinity. Now, I know the affinity is small, but that's just a little buff that you get from it. The real kicker here is the Attack Boost isn't regular attack that you see on screen. It's raw attack. If you have a greatsword, you can think like, oh, what's three attack going to do to my greatsword with a thousand damage on it? But it's not really a thousand damage. If you put it in a true raw calculator, that might only be like 250. So you're really buffing it by over like 2% per level. So if you can get your attack boost up to level 7 and get the full 21 plus 5 affinity, that's, you know, potentially a good chunk of your damage, especially on some other weapons. And you get the affinity on top. It's very strong, very useful, and it's fairly easy to slot in because it's on a lot of pieces, or you can get three levels from the charm itself. Everybody gets one attack jewel in the story. Getting other ones after that is a little tricky. It's one of the rarest jewels in the game, but if you can get one, you're set. Okay, so now for the defensive skills. For defensive skills, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking defense, but really it's not. Because of the way that you can take defense in Monster Hunter World by considering your total health pool to be called effective HP and it's a combination between your health and your defense. When you look at it that way, basically how much of a hit you could survive before you cart, vitality gives you more. Because if you think your defense is at, let's say, 500 and you slot into Jewel, it's going to give you 5 defense, that's 1%. If your health is at 100 and you get 15 vitality, that's 15% increase. So because of the way that it scales as you get closer to the game, you get more survivability per jewel slot from a vitality jewel or from a skill slot in the armor than you would from defense. Next is the evasion skills. So a lot of people are going to be like, oh, get good scrub and stuff like that with the evasion skills. But honestly, they give you extreme mobility. I find them very fun myself and they do help you survive, especially for new players and stuff like that. But personally, like you don't have to be a new player or feel like, you know, you're like some sort of scrub lord for using it. I have 300 hours in Monster Hunter World. I played every Monster Hunter that's ever been made with the exclusion of like three that were only in Japan that I couldn't get my hands on. I still use the evasion skills because they're fun and they keep you alive. Next up is the earplugs. A lot of people are going to say earplugs aren't defensive skills, they're offensive skills. I disagree with that heavily. Offensive skills to me are the ones that make you do more damage every time you hit a monster. Defensive skills are the ones that prevent you from getting hit or keep you in a fight longer so like you would count like wind resistance, earplugs, stuff like that, I would count that as a defensive skill. I mean, obviously, you can disagree with me, but, you know, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to put it with the defensive skills. If a monster roars and you can keep fighting through it, you can deal a lot more extra damage, plus certain monsters like Rathless, every single time he roars, like 100% of the time that he roars, he will do a flyback with a fireball in front of him. So if you get caught in that roar, sometimes having earplugs is a little better than having to spam X to dodge roll out of the way last second and still sometimes getting hit. And when you're talking about monsters like Tempered Devil Joe, how he can move a half second before you can when he roars, it could be the difference between carding and not carding. Now for the supportive skills, I know a lot of people again aren't going to be too keen on support stuff, but honestly... Once Tempered Devil Joe came out, I've been seeing a lot more people get into these types of skills, like the augmentation for health regen and stuff like that, or using support builds, or Hunting Horn out of nowhere became, you know, a weapon that was like less than 1% of the population used it, to now like 4 or 5% use it, because you can buff your teammates and it keeps everyone alive and keeps you dealing more damage. So, when you're going to run support, the best skills for it are wide range, because depending upon the level, you can heal your teammates and do it at a wider range, obviously. 
Then there's Mushroom Mancer, which basically lets you eat different types of mushrooms to get different effects. It can also be combined with wide range. Then lastly is Recovery Up. Recovery Up increases the amount that all of your items heal to you. But that's again something that can be used with wide range and possibly Mushroom Mancer. I haven't tested it myself, but I mean think about it. If you can get increased recovery and buffs from your mushrooms in a wide range and heal all of your teammates, it's awesome. Plus Recovery Up does work with wide range like I said, so let's say you use a Mega Potion. You're going to get more from the Mega Potion, plus all your teammates are going to get more from the Mega Potion. Doing this could allow you to just heal more or straight up drop one of the wide range skills so that way you don't have to carry as much because you're going to be healing more so you don't need the extra level. Okay, now for some weapon specific skills. So certain weapons have certain skills that affect them very well but then outside of those weapons the skill really drops off or is completely and utterly useless. So a good example of that is Focus. Focus works excellently with Greatsword and with Bow. You use it on those and you're going to be upping your damage by a solid amount. Personally, I don't use it on my Greatsword builds, but that's just because I'm so used to not using it that I don't need it. But a lot of people use it because it increases at level 3 your charge time by 20%. Focus also works for Hammer and anything that involves charge. I'm not 100% sure of the final list, but I just know if you're using Greatsword or Bow is where it would benefit you the most. The next one on the list is Power Prolonger. Power Prolonger affects a ton of weapons in the game. It affects Insect Glaive. Longsword, Switch Axe, Charge Blade, and Dual Blades. It takes all of those weapons and increases the duration of all of the buffs that you get from them. For instance, with Insect Glaive, your Kinsect will bring you back buffs. It'll make those last longer. Next up is Slugger. Slugger works excellently with Hammer. It's almost essential on the build because the whole point of Hammer is if you can KO them, is how you're going to deal a lot of damage, and it's how you're going to play your biggest role for your team in multiplayer. After that, it also works for Hunting Horn. Uh, it basically has the same role, except on Hunting Horn builds, you're typically not going to have spot for Slugger, unless you're extremely offensive with your Hunting Horn. Moving on is Guard. So Guard, along with Guard Up, I just don't have Guard Up on the list, but those two skills are very, very good for Lance, Gun Lance, and Sword and Shield. They can work on Great Sword and Charge Blade as well, because those can Guard, but those are the biggest ones. I'm not sure if the Guard Up skill works on Heavy Bowgun, but I do know that the Guard skill does. Guard will reduce the amount of knockback, chip damage, and stamina depletion that you get from a hit. So if you're using Lance, I personally like to mix in a lot of mobility skills because I feel it's very stiff, and then combine it with guard skills so that way you have extreme survivability and it lets you stick close to the monster and deal damage the way you're supposed to. Next up is Marathon Runner, and Marathon Runner is the epitome of this list because outside of the weapons that it excels at buffing, it really does nothing. So like, let's say I was running Greatsword, Marathon Runner is like a bottom tier skill, it's very useless. But if you're using bow, dual blades, hammer, or any weapon that drains your stamina steadily instead of just taking out big chunks like Insect Glaive would, it's going to reduce that, letting you stay in those damage modes longer. Now here is my list of skills that I feel are overrated. I see a lot of people put them in builds and I don't think they're as useful as people think they are. The first one is Defense Boost. I kind of got to it when I was talking about Vitality earlier. Defense Boost, if you increase your defense by 5, that's only increasing your defense if you're at 500 defense, which you easily could be in an endgame build. You're increasing your survivability when you get hit by 1%, whereas Vitality is going to increase it by 15. So unless you're trying to combine it with Vitality and max out defense to make some like uber survivability build, it's really not that useful. Next on the list is Artillery, and I think a lot of you are going to get mad at me for saying this because I see a lot of people like the skill, but honestly we tested it ourselves, and on a Diablo's Charge Blade build, the blasts were doing 86 each tick. Without it, it was doing 60. So that's 108 damage difference. Now, I'm sure some of you guys can maximize that a little better than us. That wasn't like a perfected build or anything. That was just a quick test. But even if the difference is 120 damage versus in those three skill slots, you can increase your damage for every single hit in the game instead of only your explosives. So realistically, when you're thinking about the amount of damage that you'll do in all of your physical hits and all the hits leading up to you being able to do that blast, you're going to outweigh that damage easily by dropping artillery and replacing it with something else. And when we talk about that, you can't just say straight up 3 artillery for like 3 attack because you might already have 3 max attack. The way you would have to think about it is dropping artillery lets you make a totally different build because you're not locked into those slots. So now you can change maybe like 4 different pieces of armor and be able to somehow get in like 2 extra crit boost for all you know. So, I mean, really, artillery being dropped for more offensively generic skills is, is probably in your best interests. 
But if that's how you like to play, that's how you like to play. I know we got some Michael Bay fans out there that are all about the big explosions and high damage numbers on them. So if that's how you like to play, don't ever let anybody tell you not to do it. I'm just trying to give you the facts here so that way you know when you're making the build, you might be thinking because you saw on like Reddit or something that it's like some like overpowered skill. But under testing, it's really not as strong as people say it is. It's good, but it's not like an end-all be-all skill. The next one is stun resistance. I see a lot of people walk around with these like no BS builds or whatever. Stun resistance specifically is the one that I think is the worst because without stun resistance, you might get stunned like twice a whole hunt versus with it, you might still get stunned once. You might not get stunned in the in duration of a hunt with it, but you still might get stunned once and it takes up some slots that you could be using for something else like vitality or defense that would let you survive the hit instead of worrying about not getting hit in the first place with that. Because like I said, it's not like it's get every hunt time where you're getting stunned like three, four times. That's very rare. The only exception for this rule is with Karen. When you're hunting Karen, stun resistance is pretty important. But I still say you should be stacking Thunder Resistance above everything else. As well as Blight Resistance. That way you can prevent Thunder Blight. Because that's what's really leading to your stun. So we're not trying to like, you know, anger anybody that does. We're just, again, letting you guys know what we think are the best ones. And which ones we think the community puts too much stock in. And we think it doesn't do as much as people believe it does. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is set bonuses. My three favorite set bonuses are based not just around what the bonus itself does but what the armor will give you and what you could do with those builds. So I'm sure a lot of you already know what the first one is going to be. It's Valhazak Vitality. The reason being is Valhazak Vitality gives you insane survivability by healing your red very quickly, healing your health bar afterwards, and if you combine it with a health regen mod, you almost become impossible to kill. It's very fun, and you feel like you never have to heal yourself. You're just standing there, especially if you have a health booster and you drop it in the ground and you're standing there like that and you just watch your health bar move up automatically. It's kind of cool. And his stuff, aside from the chest piece, which happens to be probably his best piece, are very easy to make and have decent skills on them to work with. Next is the Wrathless Mastery. His bigger set bonus is Mind's Eye. That's pretty good. But you're better off hoping to get the Mind's Eye Jewel and slot that in if you really want the skill. Rathalos Mastery really makes it for me with his pieces because you can choose between any of the A or B for Rathalos or Blue Rathalos. So that gives you basically four sets that you can work with to pick from. The Rathalos Critical Element will give you damage for your elemental damage on your crits. Normally if you crit even with crit booster your elemental damage is, is ignored it's just added on after your actual crit is boosted. Critical element includes your elemental damage. You wouldn't want to run that on like a great sword where element is basically negligible but if you're running like sword and shield with fire or a long sword I see a lot of people using a Valhazak build to fight against him with a fire weapon critical element build because he's weak to fire and it deals more damage than you would do with any high raw damage set. And he has a lot of stuff in there that's good to work with. Like he's got a critical boost skill on some of his stuff, weakness exploit, fire damage if you're using any fire weapons to work with that. It's really good, especially a lot of people run it on bows. Next up is Xenojiva Divinity. Xenojiva Divinity on its own is a subpar set bonus, but when you combine it with the fact that some of his armor has incredible skills for both switch axe and charge blade, but the real big one is heavy bowgun. People have been using the Devil Joe heavy bowgun and make an RNG cannon build it's called, where basically you rely on upping the ammo for it and using your explosive ammo types with Xenojiva Divinity to hope that you basically don't have the ammo expended. You can fire a lot of damage off in a short amount of time and if you stack four people doing those RNG cannons, you're guaranteed to do enough damage to stagger in a multiplayer hunt. So the fact that it can lead to one of the strongest heavy bowgun endgame builds and it's versatile where it can be used for insect glaive, switch axe, charge blade, dual blades, on top of just being, you know, good gauntlets with the critical boost to mix into really anything, makes it one of the better set bonuses, again, in my opinion. Alright, that's it for our opinions on all of the game's skills, guys. Let us know in the comments what you think. Let me know if there's any skills that you think are essential for a weapon that we miss, or any skills that you really like, or skills that we said we don't like too much, but you completely disagree with. Also, if you have any information on certain skills, like I know like a lot of people aren't sure like what Pierce Up does and stuff like that. If you have any information on how like the specifics of skills work or like stats or any charts or anything, please by all means throw them in the comments. Help out your fellow hunters. And thank you for watching Raised by Sharks. If you like what you saw, please leave a like and subscribe for more.